facing two battalions in Maryland up to their actual uh, authorized strength and a little bit over and we took over the Nike sites at um, up at Fork I guess it was and Green Spring and uh, Granite mm -hmm. and uh, down at the Bay Bridge and um, we were, our batteries were, we had, <clears throat> we manned those, I don't know, and one of them had to be on 15 minute alert at all times. And uh, another one had to be on a, what was it, I think a 24 hour alert, and the other two stood down. And we had several full-time positions in those batteries. But uh, in a couple of years, we were maintaining that schedule and go down and shoot at Fort Bliss every year. And, and uh, it was a very successful enterprise. And then, they decided they wanted to change it to Hercules. And I find very few people knew about it, but the Hercules had a nuclear warhead. And these were positioned at Jacksonville and at Granite, where I had two Hercules sites. Mm -hmm. And we reduced to one battalion at that time. And had a full time manager for the battalion. And at that time, I was moved to uh, talk to General Record because I'd gone to civil defense. And you can't be two places at once, I decided. And in civil defense, anything happened. I'd be busy with civil defense. And General Record wouldn't want me to be the National Guard. So I went down and talked to him. He was a great general. And he said, I, I was right. And he said, uh, and he asked, how many years you have? And I said, uh, almost 20. He said, I'll put you on my staff. You stay one more year because the regular army has a habit of changing the records. And you don't want to miss your 20 years for retirement. So I always, in the past, I'd always done what general records said. So I did it again, fortunately. And I have my military retirement. And uh, I was I had the National Guard back in civil defense. Thank you for that. And that's the story of the National Guard as a full colonel. Uh, I'd like to go back a little bit since we had this opportunity. Would you tell us a little bit more about this room downstairs in the alms house that has all that equipment in it? Just how did that function? Because you have a lot of radio stuff, you had sirens, you have all kinds of signs down there. Well, in reality, you brought up three different programs. Uh, the sirens, number one, <coughs> uh, for air raid, and the federal government financed them, and we arranged to put them up. We had a man that did that, wonderful old guy. And uh, he had uh, some. 60, 70 of them located around Baldwin County. Most of them still there. Most of them, most of them were put on fire, volunteer fire companies to call their uh, people in addition to the civil defense use. And uh, then the neighbors decided there were too much noise and they wouldn't let them blow. 
and modern electronics have saved them now, but it used to be that at uh, one o'clock every uh, Monday, we blew all the sirens. I don't know whether you remember that or not. Did you have one on your school? Everybody objected. And uh, had a fit because they interrupted classes. And uh, then uh, eventually they uh, were kept for natural disasters, but the fire department worked out a system of radio and all kind of electronics now, and they don't have to blow or sound or anything. But I always got the question, you know, suppose the uh, Russians attack at uh, one o'clock on Mondays, won't they? Won't everybody think it's just a drill? And I said, well, no, the Baltimore County is the only one does on one o'clock on Mondays. Everybody else does it on 12 o'clock. <laughs> what was the radio set up for downstairs? That's a second program. And uh, we had uh, volunteers uh, came from the ham radio clubs who manned all uh, these various radios. We had one here, one at uh, Hereford High, one at uh, Villa Julie, one at down at the various Essex Police Station. There were a bunch of them scattered around the county. And uh, mostly where we had shelters or where we had installations of where we had like the hospital there and things like that. And the all our shelter program was uh, <coughs> all around the county. We put uh, the drums of water, which were tin with a plastic liner, we filled them with water. Put a teaspoon of bleach in there and seal them up. And if they didn't uh, rust out, well, they lasted forever. And uh, there was the rations, which was a uh, biscuit, which I, we discussed before, which is as bad as it ever was, and perfectly usable until the vacuum was bad in the can, which never, I haven't found out one yet. And uh, there was a medical kit in each shelter. And a uh, sanitation kit in each shelter. And uh, we uh, about covered the shelter supplies. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what we had set up here. And they could, I can't remember the capacity here, but it's so I get less than 100. Mm -hmm. And then probably a few neighbors and the people in civil defense. And this was sort of a sub headquarters for so We had it organized here. Okay. Where they come to county workers and things. Mm 